Hi there. This is Joseph Jaynes. I'm a faculty member and chair of the Master of Library and Information Science degree program at the University of Washington Information School. And I've been asked to talk to you just a little bit about um, intellectual freedom and the right to inquiry and why that's so important. Let me start with uh, a little bit of language from the American Library Association on intellectual freedom. And on their website, they say, intellectual freedom is the right of every individual to both seek and receive information from all points of view without restriction. It provides for free access to all expressions of ideas through which any and all sides of a question, cause, or movement may be explored. Well, that's fine. Um, let me expand on that a little bit and then put it in the context of the project that's going on here. Um, intellectual freedom, what we call intellectual freedom or the right to inquiry, is one of the strongest pillars we have in librarianship uh, to be able to serve our clientele and communities in the best possible way. Um, because if you think about it, without the right to free inquiry, without intellectual freedom, what's the point? What's the point of a library that only provides one side of a story? What's the right, what's the point of a library that only answers a certain kinds of question or only welcomes a certain kind of people? Um, <clears throat> such libraries exist, but that's not, that's not what I call librarianship. That's not what those of us who've, who've built this profession over the last 125, 150 years in, in this part of the world um, call librarianship. So any, any recognizable librarianship and library these days um, uh, has to be able to build itself on a foundation of um, the right of people to inquire and read freely. Um, there are questions and materials that are unpopular, uh, unpleasant, embarrassing, um, matters of life and death, uh, things that are scary and even dangerous in, in every sense of those words, um, questions that may seem as you know, simple or trivial as, is it true what they say or why did this happen, all the way to, who am I? And what am I for? And all of this range of inquiry and all of the resources that we make available um, to our communities are in the service of allowing people to explore any question they like um, without fear, without judgment, and without restriction. And, and that, that cornerstone of the library and that cornerstone of librarianship um, is is, as I said, one of the strongest pillars we've got. Not to mention this right to free inquiry, this right to free expression, which in the United States is, is largely embedded in the First Amendment, um, is where all the stuff comes from that we provide access to. All the books, all the articles, all the songs, all the poems, all the all the uh, plays, all the, all the things that we have that we can provide access to come from a culture that supports um, the freedom of expression. So we want to work as hard as we possibly can to protect and safeguard uh, the intellectual freedom of our clients and our communities. Um, and at the same time, we want to be able to know what people want, what they need, what they use, how and why we can help them, uh, and that will help them to, serve, to understand and to serve them more effectively. Privacy is a very important and very necessary component of intellectual freedom, as I said. So when trying to investigate our clientele and their activities and information needs and what they're using and such, um, this sets up a balancing act, as is so often the case. We don't want to infringe on the right of people to read and inquire freely, but we also kind of want to know what they're doing. Um, so there's a, a balancing act between those two. The act of data collection in libraries, things like uh, user logs, transaction uh, uh, circulation records, uh, uh, what people even watching people browsing on the shelf or seeing what they're reading at a table, um, the, the act of data collection might undermine the kind of confidence and trust that people have in libraries that we're not going to reveal what they're doing, what they're asking, what they're using, and such, either in reality or perceptually. 
Um, and we don't want either of those to be a problem. So we want to be very careful when uh, undertaking research or investigations on what people are doing not to infringe or to be seen to be infringing um, or even to be thought of infringing um, on their rights to free inquiry and the privacy of that inquiry. So what comes next here is some practical tips on how to conduct observation studies, and those are really important. So I would encourage you to um, think through those and be able to use those um, in the really important work of understanding our clientele and communities better uh, so that we can serve them better while reinforcing the trust that they place in us. Um, I hope this has been interesting and helpful, and, and I wish you all the best in your work.